Hey folks, Joko here for um, IELTS Temple, and um, yeah, I'm bringing back the name. It's a blog, and it's a website now. The website never went anywhere. And it's a page on Facebook, and it's a page on YouTube where I keep all this stuff. And after two years, I started it uh, two years ago this month. Um, there's a lot of stuff there. I know I've answered this question before, but I do sympathize for this man who tells us that he'll be taking the exam in one month. And this is all the way back from March 17th. So this is April 7th. He's got uh, 10 days left. And I've started freaking out, as I always run out of time, when writing, while writing. Okay, experts and those who scored 7 and above in writing, how can I write faster? With the huge amount of effort required to write an essay that makes sense and without compromising the quality. Lastly, I would appreciate it if you reviewed my essay in highlighted areas for improvement. Okay, we will come to that at the end. But if you are watching this and you are not this gentleman and you're trying to just gleam something, see if you can, what advice you would give him after reading the essay that was written. How long did it take you to write this? I think it would be interesting if students recorded their writing process. You know, and that, that might help us as mentors. Okay, so here we are. Oh, I forgot to note what these colors mean. Can I do it? Can I, I, can, I do it can I do it here? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, these are the four band descriptors. Task response is a measure of how you well you're able to use the English language to present ideas and support them with uh, relevant examples um, and um, uh, ideas and consequences and explanations that support the, um, um, the positions that you present. Um, and you know, how the task, how the writing addresses the requirements of the task, when, what you're being asked to do. And I use things that don't do that, or you know, things that are you know, egregious to that. Uh, you'll see them in red. Oh, red. Now, co and co, coherence and cohesion is an interesting category. Coherence and cohesion covers a lot of things. Um, organization, do, do your, are your paragraphs logically organized with a main idea in each one? And is your referencing um, accurate? Do you use enough of it? Uh, are you signaling the reader what they're going to be reading next through the use of cohesive devices? And does the um, does it flow? Does by flow means that it's easy to read? And then we have the two that I can't help you with, except for correcting individual mistakes, uh, because you can't do anything in ten days about your lexical resource. I always forget, is it lexical resource or resources? I'm not sure. What it is is vocabulary and the um, ability to use the English language to express ideas with some flexibility and some precision. By flexibility, you're able to use the same words in different ways for different roles. Um, and the use of things like homonyms. I went to a party for the Republican Party. No, I would never go to the, a party for the Republican Party. Right? And then lastly, grammatical range and accuracy, which is using a variety of different grammatical structures uh, without mistakes. And that's going to be in yellow. No, I'm sorry, in green. Of course it's green. It's grammar. Grammar is green. There's the GR. Okay, here, like for example, technological developments, I think is better collocation. Small problem to have. Many students are now enrolled. Are they attending or enrolled? We have a lot of students enrolled that don't, don't actually come. Okay, um, in courses online. Despite the popularity of online courses. Now here's our first example of where a simple bit of referencing could have saved you words. Despite this popularity, comma, we know what popularity we're talking about. You just mentioned it. I believe that in the future, I believe in the future 
the Internet will not take the place of the traditional schooling system. Is there only one school, um, traditional schooling system? I know that in some, um, you know, uh, some Islamic countries, they have uh, religious, well, they have religious schools all over the world in every, in every religion, I think. Certainly have a lot of Buddhist schools here in Myanmar. Um, Montessori schools are an alternative to the traditional school system. So I would, I would drop the, the the in the place of traditional schooling or school systems, plural. Okay, traditional schools. No, that would cover it too. Again, you're using, I could tell you now, you're using a lot of extra words in your writing that are not needed. The first reason, body paragraph one. The first reason why, oh, good, I like the transition. Uh, it is far more beneficial. Far more beneficial. Oh, look at this, I have, I have notes over here. I forgot about that. Why does it need to be far more? And you don't even set up the fact that the real reason you think that schools won't disappear in favor of um, virtual schools is that traditional learning is more beneficial. You have to set that up before you can say the first reason why it is more beneficial. To attend regular schools rather than take classes virtually. You see, even here in the beginning of body paragraph one, we know what the topic is. You've done a good job in the introduction establishing that. So, so the first reason why it is beneficial, more beneficial, doesn't need to be far more, it means more beneficial to attend regular schools is that it provides students with the opportunity to socialize and interact. What's the difference? with other attendees. Well, I would, of course it's with other attendees. Who else would it be with? It provides students with a visceral opportunity, with a real life opportunity to socialize face to face. You need to stress that the importance of face to face. Okay, this is of utmost importance, especially for young children. I don't think utmost and especially can be in the same sentence so close to each other. Why? Well, because if something is of utmost importance, well, then nothing can be more important to it than, than that. Well, if it's, a, if it's of utmost importance to an adult, oh, but it's even more important for children. But I thought you said it was utmost. Anyway, it's it's... Utmost means there can't be anything more than that. Especially means here's something that's more than that. This is important, especially for young children in their first schooling years. Well, yeah, that's when young that's when children go to school for uh, as children of this age. Oh, sorry, as children of this age group are beginning to formulate their own understanding and perception of friendship. Okay, now why is that important? And really, we're talking like first years of school, right? So five and six-year-olds? Do... Um, as they, now instead of children of this age group, and children in their first... Uh, as they are beginning to formulate their own understanding and perception of friendship. Uh, can six-year-olds, should say, formulate anything? I mean, really, can little kids, are they sitting around formulating understandings? Therefore, comma, teachers must, no, no, this essay is not about what teachers must do. Leave that out, it's off topic. Okay, now, um, in both of your paragraphs, you have conditional structures. And that's good. Conditional structure is an advanced, well, not advanced, but it's one of the types of, social, of um, complex sentences that you should include, but you must include them with accuracy. It's not a very hard rule. Okay, is this premise, this if part, is this likely or 
impossible. Is this real or unreal? Well, you can, depending on the situation, you can frame it either way. But if it's real, we use the present tense in the if part. If young ones are trained. Okay, that's present tense. So it must be real. Sure, why not? Kindness, respect, and compassion. It in the second part, in the, in the main clause, you use the verb or the helper verb will or can or might. Okay, so we need a will here or this needs to be were, one or the other. Pave the way, there's good vocabulary, for them to become social and proactive individuals in the community. Oh, that's where you socialize is in the community. But can kids, can, can children, people aren't proactive. They can have proactive behavior. I'm a proactive person. I don't like it. Too business English. -y. Another argument that illustrates the impossibility. Now, why does it need to be impossible? Can't it just be unlikely? Of replacing conventional teaching methods with online classes. Well, I used conventional teaching methods in my online class. I just adapt them to online classes. Is the internet's, I need apostrophe S yes there, uh, dependency on advanced equipment. Now there's another, uh, this is not a, pro, uh, a good use of equipment. Equipment, something you use in sports, you know. It's technology, advanced information technology in IT, dependency on IT. These devices, comma, which are used to deliver the, the internet service, the internet service, is there only one? And you've put commas around this clause, which uh, would be incorrect because this is a defining relative clause. Um, it defines the devices here. Of course, so is these. I, don't know, it, I, I would feel much better with that, without the commas and this being a defining relative clause. <sighs> Can get destroyed. Avoid using get in IELTS writing as much as possible. It's informal. Destroyed by the occurrence of natural disasters. Well, it's destroyed by the dis natural disasters, so we don't need the occurrence of. For example... I don't like, for example, at the end of a sentence. This would mean interrupting the, the learning process. Well, if it happened during class, yes, it would. Um, until the damage is fixed. But wait a minute. I thought the equipment was destroyed. If it's destroyed, it can't be fixed. It could be replaced. Pretty easy to replace a phone. Much harder to replace a schoolroom. Whereas in schools... If an earthquake affected school buildings, the teaching process can be continued without pausing in some other premises. Okay, um, a few problems here. Once again, we have an if statement. If an earthquake affected, okay, now we've got the past tense in here. So that tells me it's an unreal conditional. And with unreal conditionals, we use in the main pro in the main clause here, we use could or would. Could be continued, not can. And then here we have a little bit of a word order problem. Without pausing in some other premise, premises. Why are they pausing in some other premises? Oh, I know what you meant to say. You need to say this. Uh, continued in some other premises without pausing. Oh, well, there. Okay, that makes more sense. And here's an interesting point for everybody, if you're listening. You can have completely incorrect ideas, uh, and it won't hurt your score. Your ideas don't have to be founded in some you know, expert knowledge of the, of the you know, reality of the situation. Because, ironically, it's in times of natural disasters where often online teaching is introduced to an area for the first time. Or at least this was how it 
was before COVID. Okay, oh no, the, the, the school has burned down because of a forest fire. What should we do? Well, until we get some place for the students to do what you said, an alternative place, um, let's have them attend class online. Okay, and this sort of emergency replacement of regular teaching is, uh, happens quite frequently. It was one of the uses of online teaching before it became ubiquitous. Uh, so, why does it, it, it... You can't just teach in a field somewhere. You know, this is not ancient times where you, people have their own little chalkboards or something and you sit around in a circle on stumps and Play-Doh. Anyway, you need some equipment in a traditional classroom as well. And you don't find that just everywhere. All right, so in conclusion, although some people speculate that the courses on the internet, the courses on the internet will I believe that education, where's education? Not used once. Education online, education um, through the internet will take the place. Now you've um, used that, that that nice phrasal verb, take the place of, uh, in a previous paragraph, and it's good vocabulary, but you don't get credit for using it twice of traditional teaching. I believe that teaching, teaching students in classrooms will always be preferred, available, will always be, it exists. Do six-year-olds state their preference I mean, you know, kids, that's not a preferred thing. It's the law. They have to go to school. As it promotes socialization and can be carried out without modern and advanced technology. Without advanced modern technology. Look up adjective order. Only because I am an English teacher do I remember opinion, size, color, origin. Oh, well, that's where I, I forget. But um, there is an actual uh, advanced is before modern because advanced is an opinion and modern is a uh, time. Okay, on to your question. Who's got an answer for this guy? Yeah. How can he write more quickly? Hmm? By writing less. By you know, uh, being more careful with your referencing and not including, uh, you know, entire phrases that you don't need. There is no word count anymore. If you write, you can write this same essay with the same ideas in, how many words was this? All right, it's, it's 280 words. You could edit this down to 240, 220 words and have the same amount of support, which is enough, really, and take less time. It would, obviously. So there's one thing you can do, and you would not compromise quality. But all in all, it's pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much. Don't freak out. Um, don't take too much time on task one, of course. You might even want to consider uh, writing task two first. Uh, at least in the paper-based exam, there's no reason you can't. Uh, if you write task two first, you'll be sure to write one that's to your standards, and then um, you, and then your letter can be a, a quick note, if need be. Eat your meal before your dessert. So task response, yes, you've, you have supported your ideas with, um, with examples and explained them, um, even though your explanations were not... Uh, both I mean, were um, fairly, you know, like you had some off topic things like what they must do and um, some odd explanations. It doesn't matter. You have supported them. Uh, coherence and cohesion. Now, this is where we have this readability. The, these extra words that you don't need uh, not only take longer to write, they make it less readable, doesn't flow as well. And, um, you know, the reader's sitting there going, oh, I'm wasting my time reading things that I already know. Uh, so that would suffer. 
but your um, vocabulary is f a lot of yeah that's the another thing that's very common in IELTS candidates at your level is they try to impress with vocabulary instead of using vocabulary as a tool to write clearly and precisely but there's a lot of good examples of good vocabulary in here grammar is very good except you know conditionals double check that relative non-relative clauses these are what we call first world problems or rich man problems there's um, much worse things that could be wrong so I'm sure you'll do fine you've only got seven days left for your last night don't study relax and try to warm up before you go to take the test meaning that don't let the first time you interact in English for the day be in the classroom, in the test room. Bye-bye.